Let's build two backpacking stoves, a fancy feast, and a rolled bud bottle. Rob here with Backpacking Adventures. Today, I'm gonna to take one aluminum bud bottle, and I'm gonna take one cat food can, and make two of the most popular stoves. A little how-to, build two stoves, one bottle, one can. Let's get going. So as I said before, I'm gonna use one bottle and one can, cat food can. I've got a little template that I'm gonna cut, be able to mark out and drill jets with. One piece of fiberglass cloth, a file. This is a little deburring tool. This is a, a, a bottom of a another bud can that I use as a, a mold. A little bit of eighth inch fiberglass wicking, some spray adhesive, a little WD-40, a sander, and a drill. With this one bottle, you're going to need to make two cuts on the one bottle. One cut is going to be four inches up, and then the next cut is going to be two inches up from that. The four inch piece is going to become a rolled bud stove bottle. And then the next piece is going to become the insert for the fancy feast stove. To make the cut, you could use just a simple pack of razor blades and a two inch spacer or a four inch spacer. You could just score it and go around scoring it. You could use a variety of different tools. I happen to have a small little wood chop saw and that's how I choose to cut mine. I'll show you how I do it. So as I said the first cut needs to be four inches up. I have just a little mark here but you're going to cut down four inches up from the top and go ahead and make that cut. That piece is going to become the rolled bud stove. The next cut we're going to make is going to be two inches up from here. That's going to be the insert for the fancy feast. Very little waste on these guys, very little waste. I like to go ahead and sand this two inch piece while I still have a handle to hold on to. You're just basically sanding the paint off. I'm lazy and use a sander. You can do it with a simple sanding block or some emery cloth or any little piece of sandpaper. There's the raw ingredients cut up and ready to go. Now we've got to finish them off and smooth out the edges. I just take and bend off any of the larger pieces and then I use a file and just go around and smooth out the outside edge first. Once I have the outside done you could use a file and do the same thing on the inside. I just picked up from Amazon this little deburring tool for five, six dollars. It's great because all you need to do is just make a couple of passes. And it's all smooth and ready to go. That is the four inch piece that's all set and ready to go and to be rolled into itself. Let's get the other two inch piece ready for the fancy feast stove. To make your crimping tool, you simply cut off a one or one and a quarter, one and a half inch piece of another bottle and then press the bottom in. Drill a small hole. That then makes your rollover crimping tool. I'm going to show you how I press it now. There's a few different ways you can press those together. I happen to have a friend of mine that owns this little press that he doesn't use anymore so he's lent it to me to make mine. I think he said he picked it up for about 30 or 40 dollars at uh, Harbor Freight or somewhere. But you can also just use a jack 
and uh, and a solid surface and jack it jack it up and I'll just show you how how to roll it over. It's a pretty simple process. One of the tricks to doing this for, that, that I use is I apply a pretty generous amount of WD-40 and then give it a good spin. And then when I try to line it up right in the center and then at the beginning I just try to get mine started just a little bit and then I rotate it. Reline it back up. Bring it down a little bit more. Again, turning the can, rotating it, keeping it lubricated. The reason I do it this way is I find that it gives me a better crimp on the inside with less creases and movements in that. So again, just another bit of the way, spin and rotate it, line it back up in the center, and now I'll go ahead and finish it down. So all you do is just bottom it out, and you know you've reached the bottom. Rotate it to spin, and you can see a nice, even, flat crimp all the way around. Up next is simply trying to clean out a little bit of the WD-40 that was in there. There you've got 75-80% of this project done. Let's go ahead and drill some holes and create our jets. Okay, it's time to drill the jets, guys. I just cut a simple template from Zen Stoves, slide it down. I just use a little piece of tape to hold it in place and then I just use a 3 30 seconds drill line it up at the top right over my line and just go through the first wall all the way around the stove All the jetting is complete, now it's just time to wrap the fiberglass wick around. I just go ahead and mark a line about a quarter of an inch down from the jets all the way around the stove. That just lets me know where to start wrapping my wick. You can use super glue, uh, crazy glue, any of that stuff. I picked up a tube of this stuff from, uh, from Walmart pretty cheap. It's called E6000, it's non-flammable and industrial strength. and I don't know, it's just what I choose to use. It works pretty well for me. There's no real science to this part. I just put a little dab of the glue. Undo a bunch of my wicking. Now it's just a matter of doing a wrap all the way around a few times. After you get it through a couple of times when I get down towards the end I just loop it over top of my finger and then come back and that lets me know where to cut it and I go ahead and cut it off and then just feed it back under itself I just go through and try to straighten out my wicking a little bit, make it look a little neater. There's only one piece that's left and that's just to glue around the top and the bottom and trim this piece of wick off. So let's finish this thing up.
There is one last part that I forgot to show you guys. I like to take and just drill on the inside one little pressure relief hole and that allows the stove not to pulse and burn a little more evenly. That's it, stove is done. Let's build the fancy feast and then we'll get both of these lit off and get them both working. To finish off the fancy feast stove, it's really a matter of folding the wick over, getting it secured to this, and then placing it all together. The fancy feast cam we're gonna use, I've already cleaned it off and rinsed it all out and, and you got it ready to go. One trick that I do is rather than just using the pull tab and pulling the can off, I actually take the safety cutter for a can opener and I cut all the way around and that allows me to remove that whole inner ring and I just pluck the entire top off and I don't end up with any sharp edges and it allows to push the can down in a lot easier without having to do any bending or messing around with that with that lid top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach the fiberglass cloth. <clears throat> I choose to cut my fiberglass cloth just a little bit wider than the width of my insert piece. So I cut my insert piece at two inches. I make this just a little bit wider. I'll show you how I prepare this to wrap it up onto the insert piece. I found one of the easiest ways to do this is to use some type of a sticky adhesive. You could use hairspray, you could use a lot of different things. I just have this Krylon spray adhesive I picked up and I just hit a reasonable amount onto one side of this. I then simply fold it in half. By applying the uh, sticky adhesive I see that it prevents a lot of the fraying that I would normally get. This edge here that's folded, that's going to be the top part that's going to go up onto my cutout Bud Light piece or Bud Bottle piece. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch here. I simply take and apply just a little bit more of this adhesive to my to my insert piece. Not very much. And then just take and wrap my cloth around it. Try to keep it nice and even with the bottom to allow for good wicking. I go two wraps around. You see that starting to come together? And then when I get back to where I started, I just take a pair of scissors, trim off the excess, and then I like to hit this one more time with a little bit more adhesive. All you've got to do now is match the two together. Pretty simple process. Knowing that I wrapped my piece this way, I'm going to twist this in, going in an opposite direction, forcing it all the way down in. You have one step left and you've got a completed fancy feast stove. Just as I had to on the other stove, cut a little relief hole to let gas escape <clears throat> and no pressure to build up. I like to do the same thing on these stoves.
that's it. A little bit of a uh, little bit of your time. It's a few raw materials, mostly a cat food can and one bud bottle, and you've got yourself two excellent backpacking stoves that are some of the all-time favorites. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you on the trail, guys. And all you do is you bottom it out. You'll feel it when you just can't press anymore. There you go. Huh. And you know.